You know what they say, right? One person's trash is, well, another person's treasure. I recently went on a used PC part hunt, right? Over on the Facebook marketplace to be exact. And I put in a bid for a few pieces of hardware or a few items that I thought would be of great interest for content here in the community and also to add to the tech treasury, if you will, here on the channel. And now a few things to keep in mind here on my used PC part hunt journey for today. And that is, I didn't want to go past say 20, 30 miles here from where I'm located. I'm located here on the East Coast in Maryland. So I typically like to go no further than say two counties south of me and no further than say the state of Delaware and quite possibly PA, depending on what the deal is exactly. I typically don't venture off too far from there, but there were a lot of items over on the Facebook marketplace from graphics cards to CPUs to combos to RAM to motherboards to monitors, just a wide range of different items that was both close to me and a little bit further away. Quite naturally, some of the best deals or some of the best finds were definitely out of my reach and a little bit too uncomfortable for me to drive to. At that point, I had to factor in gas and also quite possibly toll, and then that kind of diminishes the value of the hardware that I'm looking at. But before heading out, I put a couple offers in the night before to a few sellers and then waited to hear back from them. My goal initially going in on this used PC part hunt was to try to find at least three core crucial deals or at least three core pieces of hardware that I can add to, say, create content or for some new material. So here's how it turned out. Okay, so the first part of this adventure takes us to going to pick up an RX 580 that I was back and forth in talks with this seller for a while and finally agreed to a set price. So I'm on my way to go meet that person now or they should be here hopefully soon. Now it's only item one of three, again, that I'm targeting here on this used quest or adventure. So as the sellers respond back to me, I guess hopefully while I'm out and about or while I'm recording this, while I'm recording these portions of the video, hopefully they'll get back to me, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. But we got the RX 580, so now we're on our way to stop number two, and that's to pick up the 5600X. That was listed for $88, but was able to talk the seller down to $80. A little higher than I wanted. I actually was hoping to be able to get that CPU for about $60, but still a very capable six core, 12 thread, uh, chip and it's only a generation old and I have an x570 motherboard sitting doing nothing back at the studio That's going to be you know Enthusiastic to be paired with that chip Okay, so now we just got back from stop two I have the RX 580 we picked up for 70 USD. I think that's a pretty solid pickup or a pretty solid buy for a pretty solid build down the future or to do some tests. It's only seven years old and can still very much get the job done at about 1080p, right? Like nothing past 1080p suits this graphics card. It does have eight gigabytes of VRAM, but the higher up in the resolution, then the more demanding the, uh, the, the more demanding it is on your graphic resources. But I think the RX 580 is gonna be a, a solid video to do a seven year follow up on. So excited to have that in the bag. And then just got back from stop two where we picked up the Ryzen 5600X, the six core 12 thread Zen 3 CPU on the AM3 socket, or I'm sorry, on the AM4 socket. Still has a lot of life left inside of it. Picked this up for 80 USD over on the used marketplace. I had a deal in the works to pick up a set of 16 gigabytes of VRAM. The seller wanted to ship it. They were local enough, but didn't want to come down the price. So it's going to be a hard skip for your boy Lab. So I was only able to initiate two out of the three deals I reached out and some of the others that I had reached out to still hadn't got back to me, but the Ryzen 5600X, the six core 12 thread CPU, very much still worthy doing a follow up review on. Again, I have an X570 motherboard sitting back at the studio that can use a little tension and a little love. So we're definitely going to pair those those two together and see what kind of bill we can come up with. Okay, sorry, now I had to go back inside the car because it started raining. But yeah, picking up where we left off, got the RX 580. 
be picked up for 70 USD and the Ryzen 5 5600XD 6 core 12 thread Zen 3 CPU. But again, that's the only two deals I was able to capitalize on today, bringing us to a grand total of about 150 USD spent on these two components. Again, I had a few others in mind, but the sellers didn't get back to me in time or while I was out and about and while I was shooting this video. And just a few additional takeaways from this whole experience or from this used journey hunt, if you will, is that I was able to save about 15 to $16 by just generally asking the sellers would they come down on their price just a little bit. So it just kind of goes to show that you miss essentially 100% of the shots that you don't take. If I didn't ask the sellers, could they come down a little bit? I didn't get, you know, the prices I was targeting, but a little off of something is better than nothing. The Ryzen 5600X was listed for $88. No idea if the seller would be willing to negotiate or come down the price, but I went ahead and offered 60 USD and he counter offered with 80 stating that the CPU had very low mileage. So I figured it's still a lot of IPC left in the 5600X and that silicone still has a lot left in the tank to deliver some solid, you know, 1080p or even 1440p high refresh rate, high graphics gaming. And then the RX 580. The seller had it listed for $75. I countered with 60, they countered back with 70. So that's about a little in the middle. I checked over on eBay before committing to that price and without the cost of say shipping and additional tax that I would incur, that's actually a pretty fair deal. So not only does this card have solid resale value on top of its price to performance, it's not that old given that these XFS models were manufactured a little along the lines of the RX 580's life cycle. But yeah, that concludes the outside portion of my used PC part hunt. I'm gonna get these parts back to the studio and plan some content around them along with still trying to capture some of those other deals. And we're back here in the studio. We picked up the RX 580. Also have the Ryzen 5 5600X, not a bad deal. Again, kind of explain that back in the car, how much savings we captured there and how much potential the RX 580 has as a seven-year-old graphics card that's still capable of delivering high FPS at 1080p. On top of that, this particular model or the seller's RX 580 was in, you know, really good shape, really good condition. I didn't notice any scratches, blemishes, any dust. It looked like it was barely even maybe cracked out of the box, which it didn't come with, unfortunately. But it barely looked like it had any use at all or very limited, you know, wear and tear or, you know, driven with it with its games and whatnot. It just didn't look like it was utilized at all. So, yeah. That's the RX 580. A lot of resale value there. A lot of potential for content and just following up with some modern games. And then pickup number two was the Ryzen 5 5600X. The six core, 12 thread, um, Zen 3 base CPU. The Zen 3 Stinger still has a lot of juice left in its tank. It's only a generation old. Quite naturally, I did inspect the pins. He didn't have this case. It came in a Ziploc bag. But when I got back, I took it out of the Ziploc bag, held it under one of my studio lights here, and just double checked the pins. They all looked good. You know, I didn't see any anomalies or any bent pins while I was there with the customer. But then when I got back, I put it under scrutiny under one of my studio lights and again, saw no issues, no flaws. So as far as I'm concerned, this CPU is good and ready to go. I mean, these two components paired together can make for one heck of a gaming system that would be able to run most of the game that gamers find popular over on Steam from Destiny 2 to Red Dead Redemption 2 to The Witcher 3, Apex, Fortnite, exactly, Minecraft, you know, all the popular gems, Call of Duty Warzone. So this CPU and the RX 580 has a lot of potential. And while again, I was unable to hit my target or hit my mark of trying to find three crucial or critical deals to snag over on the Facebook marketplace, I say two for three or two out of three isn't that bad, especially consider what we were able to snag and how much we were able to snag them for. The RX 580, XFS RX 580, a gigabyte graphics card picked up for 70 USD and the Ryzen 5 5600X six core 12 threads and three CPU we picked up for 80 USD, not 70, I'm sorry. It was 80 USD. I wanted 60 or 70, somewhere along the lines there. I thought it would have been a, a, a solid snag if I could have negotiated down to that price, but again, all things considered, it was well worth it. Now, a few tips I would share when you're, say, shopping the used market. Go in with the mindset of you know exactly what you're looking for and 
what you're trying to either enhance, improve, or fix with your PC setup. If you're looking for a newer graphics card, if you're trying to, say, upgrade your CPU and you have an older legacy motherboard, so you're trying to find, say, like a ninth generation Intel CPU or an eighth generation CPU and lower, or a Ryzen 5 2600, 3600, or a previous generation Zen Plus, Zen 1 CPU, doesn't matter go in with the mindset that you know exactly what it is you're looking for and why you need it once you're able to say make a determination on a particular component or a piece of hardware you know you need and you're dead locked on it hit the seller up give yourself at least a day in between one to arrange pickup that way it gives it time for you and the seller to communicate things like pickup time and location and even cost go in with the mindset that hey you don't have to necessarily settle for the initial listing price. You can always kick the wheels on the tire a little bit, ask the seller, is this price firm or are you willing to negotiate? And sometimes some sellers and listers would even have that in their description of the item. They might say, or best offer or willing to negotiate. But once you have ironed out all the details, you've come to an arrangement on price, location and time, and you go to meet the lister or the seller, I recommend picking a safe location either near a police station or a heavily crowded area and in the daytime. If the seller and lister is willing to agree to those terms, you should be good to go. If not, I would be concerned and I would avoid that seller or lister altogether. Never send money before you look at the item upon arrival. If you can, always deal in cash and then inspect the item before you make the transaction. If you're buying a graphics card, definitely look at the PCIe header and make sure there aren't any dents or damages or cracks along the lines of there, and then make sure there aren't any rust or signs of corrosion near the HDMI and the input output connectors. If you're buying a CPU, say like a Ryzen CPU on the AM4 socket, then you wanna make sure there aren't any bent pins. And if you're buying a motherboard, like say an Intel motherboard, you wanna make sure the pins in the inside of the socket aren't bent as well. It's typically hard to tell if an Intel CPU is bad just by looking at it, but you can ask the seller copious amount of questions. And if they're unwilling to share them or they're hesitant to provide details, then there could be some signs of damage or they're trying to you know, sell you a faulty part. If everything looks good, make the transaction, get back, test it as soon as you can, and make sure it works as described. So make sure you go in with the buyer's mindset that you're only looking for components or hardware that you need and you're able to test them once you acquire them. If you're buying a new power supply unit, if you're buying a graphics card, if you're buying a CPU, you wanna have all the other necessary components lined up so that once you get that piece of hardware, you can immediately test it out to make sure it functions. And that's all I got for this one, y'all. Thanks for this bit of story time and joining me for essentially my first documented used PC part hunt. It went off, I guess you could say 50-50. And it wasn't too compelling or exciting, but just a kind of future glance into some of the hardware stories that we could be coming with here on the channel. But that is essentially all I got for this one. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button for me with the notification bell turned on. I hit a wall and with your help, we can break through it. I do hope to catch you all in the next one. So until then, be easy.